We're at the Santa Monica Airport. What's your name and what type of aircraft are we looking at here today? I'm Justin Dillon with Cirrus Aircraft and this is the new Vision Jet SF-50. That's awesome. So what do we have behind you over there far away? So farther back we have the new G6 SR-22T piston model airplane. Okay. Uh, we're about to deliver our 7,000th airplane to a uh, customer and then we've just started now delivering the new Vision Jet to customers as well. This is show number 33. Let's walk over there and look at it. Yeah, so basically the new uh, Vision Jet, uh, as you can see here, is a uh, first of its kind with a single engine uh, jet on the back of the airplane there. Um, one of the very unique things that the two aircraft both share, the piston and the jet, is these both have a parachute. So if the worst of the worst ever were to happen, I have that option, kind of that ultimate insurance policy, to know that I'm gonna make it home safe to my family at night. So I've got the parachute up in the nose here on the airplane. Um, pull the handle above the pilot's head, you have that option, it will blow the chute out of the, out of the front of the airplane and bring the airplane directly down uh, centered. Awesome. Now, what's up with the V-tail? Talk to us about that. Yeah, so if you wanna come around, the, uh, the V-tail here basically, uh, we've got some unique things going on aerodynamically here. So most aircraft, nice and uh, like loud. The piston, have an elevator and a rudder. But notice we combine these two. If you come around the back here, you'll see the rudder Vader. It's called. I have both elevator and rudder Beautiful. combined. So there's a very simple mechanical mixer then there that takes the inputs that I do with the feet and then I do with the uh, the yoke. And it combines those to give me that up and down and that yaw force. That's awesome. Now talk to us about the engine. How easy is it to operate if we have flown a Cirrus before? Yeah, so uh, this is a Williams FJ33. It has what's called FADEC. So a FADEC controlled engine, full authority digital engine control. When I go to start up the airplane, it looks for all the things that you'd normally have to do in a jet. You have to introduce fuel, turn on boost pumps. It does all that automatically. So the beauty of this airplane, I could take any of our 7,000 piston odors and put them right into this airplane. So when they go to start that engine, they basically turn a knob and press the button and it does everything for them. Uh, if it sees a exceedance kind of going over the limits, it'll actually turn itself off. Um, and so it's, it, it creates a very, very simple approach for the pilot to jump right in this airplane. That's awesome. I don't see any rivets. Talk to us about the wings. Yeah, so you'll notice the whole airplane here is a carbon fiber construction. Uh, it's a little bit different where we use fiberglass and carbon on the piston. The jet is all carbon. Um, except for the flight controls, we still use a metal surface for those. And so the rudder vaders, the flaps and the ailerons, those are still metal. But everything else is carbon fiber. Can you take us in the cockpit real yeah, quick? Yeah, absolutely. Come on around. So the pretty unique thing about the seating in this airplane, um, I have seven seats in this airplane. Five adults and two kids. So we call it a five plus two configuration. Um, so as you, you step up to the airplane here, you'll notice a, a big, nice, large entry to get into the airplane. But notice it's kind of the leg room right off the bat. Yeah. If you want to hop on in. Very easy to get in and out of. Once we're in the airplane, we have this tremendous amount of leg room in the back. Um, huge panoramic window. I'm six foot one and I almost can't even touch. That's amazing. Headroom. We've got yeah. plenty of room in the airplane here. Um, so it's set up to be five adults and then you have the two kids seats in the back here which are limited to 90 pounds a piece. So we can throw, uh, okay. great for family that has small kids. So that's a kid or, or a dog? Yeah, exactly uh, or, right. And then that's a full-size adult that you can put there? Correct, and these Got are it. all removable. All five of these rear seats, we literally click, lift, bring it out of the airplane, we can leave them in the hangar. So you might leave this third row all in the hangar, put mountain bikes back here, and then you've got yep. the room up front for four adults. Talk to us about the Garmin setup. So the Garmin is a G3000 series system. Okay. Notice I've got three touchscreen controllers. Uh, what's very unique about the way the Cirrus did this, we call the Cirrus Perspective Touch. So uh, we took a standard G3000 system and totally customized it for Cirrus. You have designated functionality. So the screen over here on the left is yeah. going to be for your primary flight display. The middle screen is for your multifunction display. And the far right is your NavCom controller. So instead of looking at a box that says it does everything, we give it designated functionality, which is, makes it more intuitive for the pilot. Absolutely. And they look down and go, this one right in front of me covers the PFD and so forth. Oxygen up top. Yes, yeah, so you have quick don masks that uh, you use if you had an emergency. Everything up top here is totally for an emergency. I have the parachute handle yep. that's available to me. I have the ability to dump the cabin, for instance, or put out a fire if I had one on the engine, those types of things. But anything above your head, you only use in an emergency. Now you can pressurize up to, and fly up to 9,000, or 28,000 feet. 28,000 feet, that's correct. And it gives you a cabin altitude of about 8,000 feet here in the cabin. So very comfortable uh, for the family flying along at 28,000 feet. And this is designed not for the hired pilot, but for somebody that is an owner operator. Yeah, correct? exactly. It's, it's very much designed for the owner operator or even from the way you get in this airplane. Notice the way this seat works. I'm not going between those seats. I'm bringing this all the way back. And to get in the airplane, I could just slide right wow. in. Get in the airplane, close the door, and then slide the seat forward. Both of these seats go up in the same way. 
um, so that I have ease of entry without having to climb between the seats. And Fantastic. Contort. Talk to us a little bit more about the controls. Yeah, so on the flight controls here, really, really, really simple. The basic yoke, I have a side stick here basically with, again, with the rudder faders there, it's automatically working the elevator. Mm -hmm. And then roll control, very simple aileron control. Mm -hmm. Notice on the center console, I just have a throttle lever, a single throttle lever. But there's no mixture, no fuel pumps, no right, introducing so talk fuel. to us really quickly about the flaps. Yep, so basically uh, down the center console, notice how clean everything is. Yep. I just have a very simple two-position flap uh, uh, controller here that's designed exactly like the one in the piston. So I have two notches, just a higher speed of 190 and 150 yep. versus 150, 110 in the other piston aircraft. All the switches here on the dash, the same as the piston. So I've got lights, I've got ice, they're all in the same place. So muscle motor memory, everything I've been doing in the piston for all these years, when I get in the Cirrus jet, it's oddly familiar. It's different, it's a 3000 base system, but I can just tell right away that things are right where my hand knows them to be. Yeah, and so talk to us about, do you think this is, how much more difficult is it to fly this aircraft than if we were, I asked you before, but what do people say? Yeah, so uh, all of the assistant, uh, the Cirrus piston owners that I put in this airplane, they get in, they go for one flight, and they realize this is simpler to fly than my piston. When they get in, they realize that there's nothing else to manage. Uh, in fact, there's a lot less to manage with pressurization being automatic, not having to worry about managing the engine so much. Uh, again, no mixture, no boost pump, any of that. And in fact, when you come into land, uh, your speeds are different, right? In a jet, jets do go faster, so things happen a little quicker. But coming into land, I have the same speed. VREF on the final is about 80 knots. I'm using the same speed, yeah. Uh, and I'm crossing the fence and touching down just slightly higher than the piston by a few knots. Now you don't have very much of a swept wing here. Talk to us about what kind of runway length you need. Yeah, so you've got this kind of what I call the big Hershey bar shaped wing. You get a lot of great lift out of that. Um, out of here today, with five of us on board the airplane out of Santa Monica, we took off and we had. Uh, 2100 feet of ground roll okay. in the airplane so that's about average on a sea level day like this um, and that'll change between here and my home in Denver Colorado I'm up at uh, higher in the mountains and so in the summertime you'll see that change uh, it's gonna go up uh, with high density altitude those types of things but on average down low uh, about 2100 feet is a pretty good average runway length that's terrific well thank you for coming out to the very best airport in the whole world Santa <laughs> Monica Airport we're excited to have you here this is our hundred and one year we're 101 years old this year. Awesome. Congratulations. Well, thanks for coming out. Have yeah, a great thanks day. for having me.